I'll, I have one more piece if you still have time for me. I have uh, <laughs> enough time for you. <laughs> I have to go a bit in the back because it's really heavy, so I hope you can see it. Huh. It's uh, a piece of metal we found years ago. Damn. And it, it's uh, part of a lid. I think it's approximately 15 kilos that I'm holding now. So after Corona time, I can do some exercise. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> this is a piece of uh, one of the panthers that got uh, disabled. And it's from the backside, the top side of the, the panther tank. And uh, what it's really special for me, uh, it's from uh, one of the tanks that got knocked out. In fact, only the one tank that got knocked out in uh, a place called uh, True de Lou. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second SS were attacking Manhei and Gramineel on the 24th of uh, December, succeeded in, in it, and uh, um, all the American troops, they had to retreat uh, to the rear, to in the direction of RSA. Mm -hmm. And a couple of guys from the 289th Regiment, uh, K Company, they held uh, a really thin line, and when the Germans broke through Gramenil with uh, approximately eight uh, Panther tanks, um, led by a Sherman uh, tank they stole in Manhei, huh. the first tank got disabled with a bazooka shot from Richard Wigan. And um, that was the moment that the whole attack from the 2nd SS was halted in that area. It's wow. a very nice space, through the loop, very small road. And um, with the blocking of that tank, all the other tanks behind him uh, had to retreat to Graminil and uh, they, they couldn't go any further. So they were halted at the exact same spot, the, the exact place there uh, that still exists as the same as it is. I, I will send you some pictures or maybe you have. Yeah, I have, I have the pictures on the screen and I also have the map on the screen showing the road leading out from Manhei to the west. Yeah, it's really hard to, to find. Towards, <laughs> towards Briscoll. And then you yeah. have. I think there did they um, change the main road? There, it's like a, there's it has a big curve, but they they yeah. renew the they did they made a, a new way through that. But in the old yeah, road, just, you can see it in the curve right there. That's I, I exactly where exactly. it happened. Yeah. So and uh, we've been studying on this story for uh, well almost twelve years, in fact, and we found many things over there. Um, and uh, the the story about Richard Wigan is pretty known and you can find it in many books but i can already reveal that the story that it's as it, it is tell told in uh, in books is not the correct one uh, thanks to a lot of uh, veterans and family members who could uh, uh, find out uh, what the exact position of richard we was mm -hmm. and uh, they say that he was on the on the left side of the road um, but he was on the other side, uh, just a bit behind the tank when he fired his bazooka. And firing that bazooka on the Panther tank killed him instantly because of the blast. We have his uh, IDPF. Wow. And uh, w when you read hit that IDPF, you will find out that he was blown to pieces. His legs and arms were gone. And uh, wow. yeah, yeah, when the graves registration had to collect them, they, they put it all together, of course. And uh, But that gave us, an, gave us an indication that something else happened. Uh, then the official story tells you. The, so what? The official... what the, and the official story tells what? That it was in front of the Panther tank, and uh, they were uh, ambushed, of course, by this tank, and uh, everybody panicked. And he was apparently one of the guys who remembered from training that you have to activate a bazooka round, put it in your bazooka, and then shot it. And uh, so he shot at the. Uh, uh, that's what the official say. At the front side of the the panther tank disabling it but he was the panther tank was hit from behind huh. and when you look at the pictures of the the, the that panther tank the, i have a couple of them you won't see any damage on the place where uh, they say that it got hit right i have so the pictures here the the, i have two pictures here one with snow and one without snow yep yeah so he was and the one without the snow with with the kid in it uh -huh. that's really interesting it's a bigger picture you can zoom in pretty good right. and you won't see any damage on the on the uh, front side on or on the right side of the tank right. so it is hit from the other side wow that's pretty cool i have it right here that's yeah, it's a re it's really interesting because uh, we, we discussed a bit bastone and saint fit uh, as, as i said it's really important but the blocking of the 2nd SS Das Reich in through the Lou is also a major event 
uh, because the Germans were halted there. And it, for them, it was the end of the uh, Battle of the Bulge. The only thing they could do was defend. And uh, as many of you know, the second SS arrived, they were no uh, silly people. They were really <laughs> battle hardened troops. And they were stopped by green troops from the 75th Infantry Division. Well, eat that. <laughs> That's amazing. That's truly amazing. Um, yeah, wow. That's a crazy story. And there's a monument for Wigand, if I'm right. Yeah. I think yeah, I have a picture yeah, of that, uh, too. Yeah, somebody, one of the civilians from this area, he uh, dedicated his uh, research uh, to Richard Wigand, and he uh, put up that monument. I have a yeah. picture of it of bad quality, but you might, people are able to. It's in French. It's a, yep. Is that the 75th Division logo, the emblem, and then the unit? Dis, you know, yep. Dis, yep. Dis, what do you, how do you call that? Distinguished unit in, in unit insignia. <laughs> yes. Yes. Corporal Week, Richard F. That. Weekend. Wow, that's crazy. Yep. On Christmas Day, actually, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I have contact with uh, with the family, um, and they told me a couple of years ago um, one of the uh, uh, the nephews. I think it's a nephew. It's a sweet. Uh, he's named after Richard, and he said that each Christmas Day. Um, have a small memorial service mo um, moment before dinner. Uh, they say a lot of prayers and recall what their uh, family member did here in the uh, in the Ardennes. And it's, it, it is thanks to the family that we have a picture of him. It's the, so it's the guy with the military police patch. Is that him? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. So uh, bef before he went to Europe, he was in another unit. You also can see on his um, 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 jacket that he was involved in some kind of air base, I think. Yeah. Was, uh, yeah. The, I, I think it's the eight air force on his uh, sleeve. Up. That's pretty cool. I, that's an amazing picture, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. When you give some somebody a, a face, it becomes more special. That's 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 the weird thing, right? Yeah. I always Absolutely. have I have that when I research. Last week I was researching. I have an item of the Fifth Infantry Division. Mm -hmm. uh, like the book, a booklet, and it has a, it has a name and the unit of the guy because he was the owner of it. And I got in contact with the, uh, with the, I, I think his daughter, and I didn't, uh -huh. I had, I didn't have any face. And I have this booklet for three years already, and I, I, I started to do, started to do some research on Facebook and found, I found his daughter, and she gave me the photograph and a lot of other information, and like all of a sudden my booklet became. So much more valuable, in my opinion, like not not more not money wise, but just yeah. emotional value, and it's amazing that I now yeah. have a face to it the is. guy, and uh, and that's what 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 we've discussed. Has zooming in so deep, at the moment you can find the guy with the face that you've been researching. I know you research a lot too in in Luxembourg. Right. At the moment, you know the story. You almost can see those guys walk in the terrain. And if you can add a face to it, that makes it so special. Exactly. Because that's the reason we do things. We want to remember the stories, but especially the guys who were here. Exactly. And they, they made, as they say, they made the final sacrifice. But it's true. They never went home again. They left the family in America trying to free us from uh, the Nazis. Right. 